John Williams. I uh, started a shop back in 1997 called Mount Logan Off-Road up in Logan, Utah. We started doing the National Rock Crawlings in 1999 through 2007. If any of you guys are old and remember the old carnivore that was done by Avalanche, we built the K2, the second version of that, and uh, we had two of those and competed till 2007 doing that. I sold that shop in 2009 and went to work at Miller Motorsports Park where I do the off-road driving stuff. I created the Raptor Assault program and still teach at Miller Motorsports. Raced Ultra 4 in the stock class JK. The sidewalls take technology from the KR2 race tires which won King of the Hammers this year which uh, Brad Lovell's got on his vehicle. The upper shoulder of the sidewall is four and a half millimeters thicker than the KO is as far as extra strength in the sidewall. Another unique thing that a lot of people overlook is overall tire weight and when you look at a tire and you look at the sidewall, you know, you can go grab a sidewall and they're generally thick all the way through the sidewall. BFG figured out on when this tire was made how to vary the thickness in the sidewall so instead of if you have a weaker tire you're trying to make stronger, generally the people just put more rubber, more compounds, more stuff in the sidewall, tire gets heavier. What does that do to your minivan motor JK? All that extra rotating mass, it kills it. So they figured out where they could put rubber only where they needed it and leave it off where they didn't, which the tire rides phenomenally smooth. The lugs are a lot more stable on the outside. One more unique thing, basically in any tire that we have, the contact patch, say it's generally this big when you're driving down the road, that's really what you're doing, that's the traction. Everything you do to your Jeep doesn't matter if you can't get the traction to the ground. The other unique thing is the sipes aren't just sipes. A lot of tires you look at, you go over and look at the sipe and it's just a straight cut within, it, within the block. When you sp spread apart the block in the KO2, you're going to notice that it weaves down like that so that when you have, when the tire is turning, the blocks are actually able to support the other block that it sits next to. So when it's going forward, all those biting edges are working to get traction. When you're turning, if it was a straight side, your blocks would be basically turn each other apart. So there's the, the lugs that wave like this, and then there's also bars that go down in the lug, and it's called a 3D active or self-supporting type side, which gives you the lug stability in that. Being that the lugs are more stable, the tire gets 15% better wear on the freeway than the KO did and it's a hundred percent double the life in the gravel than the previous KO. So as far as an off-road tire it is all you could ever, I mean it blows my mind every time I drive in it. I was uh, fortunate to be on the team. We took eight Raptors from Miller Motorsports Park along with the wide open buggies to Mexico. We logged 33,000 miles in Baja doing that launch for everybody that came down to do that. We suffered three flat tires in 33,000 miles. One was a, go ahead sir. You have some of those here where we can Yes. Yeah, they're on the yeah. Side. The uh, one was a legitimate spare. One guy hit a rock so big it broke the wheel out and another one uh, was ran over a nail. But in 33,000 miles in Baja, you know that, that so it really speaks for itself what this tire is capable and able to do and uh, there's a whole lot more to it. If you see me and want to know more, grab me at lunch and I'll be happy to show you more, talk with you more about the tire. But it really, there's silk in the tread. It's got the snowflake on the sidewall for the winter snow. Really is an amazing tire. So definitely watch how those tires are working out there on the trail today. Any questions? Can I get a set put on before we leave? <laughs> they are terrific. We're here today to talk a little bit about the new VF Goodrich All-Terrain TAKO2. A lot of people look at this tire and think, oh boy, it looks just like the KO. All they did is change the tread a little bit. Nothing new, nothing different. But that's where they're completely wrong. So you look at this tire, there are visual similarities between the KO2 and the KO. People know the KO, they're used to it, they've seen it, they've used it, they love it. How do we make it better? So the KO came out in about 1999, so it's definitely long overdue for a replacement. But to get the replacement right, this tire had to be epic, it had to be perfect, it had to do everything better than the KO that it's replacing. So how do you improve one of the best all-terrain tires that's on the market? So the engineers really went to work on this tire. First and foremost, we'll start with the sidewall. They took the technology from the KR2 racing tire and put that right into the KO2. It is the exact same rubber compounds, the same shape, not quite as aggressive, but the exact same shapes as the KR2 race tire. So BF Kirch does, when they get a new idea, they put in their race tires, they test it, they use it, when it works, it comes back into what the consumer gets. So it's a race proven product. So what they did is they figured out in the logarithm 
when the tire's rolling over obstacles, your tire hits and then the tire turns and rolls past it. So they figured out in the logarithm that it shows the deflection angle of a rock, a stick, a branch, whatever you may be hitting, and they put the rubber where you need it. The way the cords and everything are done inside, it's made and belted so that when something hits it, it's made to deflect it and push it away. So that's one of the very neat thing about this tire that the other tires don't have. Another great thing is, is it's four and a half millimeters thicker in the upper part of the shoulder than the KO was. The KO was a heavy duty all-terrain tire. Not many are three-ply sidewalls and are that strong. This is even stronger than that is. But when we look at all this extra rubber, usually with more rubber comes more weight. So with this tire, in the past, whenever they wanted to change the sidewall strength or they're belting the tire, the tire just gets thicker. More material, more weight, less performance. BF Goodrich figured out on this tire how they could vary the thickness in the sidewall. The sidewall is really thick and heavy duty here in the weak spot. It's a little bit thinner here and it comes back into thicker and heavier up here, which improves your overall ride quality. It's not just a big, thick, heavy carcass that does not ride well. So there's a ton of work went into making the sidewall do what it does to be able to perform and give you guys all the benefits that they could out of the sidewall. So now we're going to turn it back to the tread. So basically when this tire is driving down the road, you've got a contact patch on the road of about this big. How effective this contact patch is at putting the traction to the ground is what really matters. You can spend thousands of dollars on your suspension, your axles, everything else. If your tire doesn't put the traction to the ground, at what good is it? So you go by a nice suspension, good axles, good shocks, and cheap tires. You just lost all the money you invested in your vehicle by doing that. So within this contact patch, there is nearly 70% more biting edges and nearly 70% more siping within that contact patch. Are all sipes created equal? No, they're not. BF Goodrich, figure out how do we make this site better to make this tire last longer? So within each of these blocks, in each site, all the sites, they have, they have a cupping action within the tire. As it wears, it just changes where the actual biting edge is as it moves down. But when you're trying to turn, those inner, uh, the waves lock against each other, become a self-supporting lug, which gives you more lug stability, makes the tire drive truer and more straight down the road. Also within that, there's bars that go down the tire to give friction when it tries to turn the end of the concave ends is a cup so it's actually it ends like this and there's the opposing side has a cup that captures it when you're turning at the end of each of these sides all sides are not created equal what that equates to if you're used to driving on the freeway and you feel like your tires wandering or moving a little bit there's no stability within the lugs this tire is so much more stable driving down the freeway. For so your day-to-day -day use, the how well your car drives, how straight it drives is all going to be greatly increased. One more thing you're going to notice is you've got the scalloped shoulder just like the mud trains do. Allows you to get a little bit more aggressive sidewall traction here. If you're turning into a rut, it gives you the ability to have like a shovel and a release and a shovel and a release is the sidewalls digging in. Right in here, these are the mud phobic bars. So is the material you're driving in mud or sand packs in here. When the tire flattens out, a little air pocket's created inside of it that allows the material to release. When you look in the tire, you'll see these little triangle parts here. And those are to prevent stone drilling. When your tire's coming over and you have that sharp rock coming up, if it by chance hits right there, the rock can go right to the tire. That extra rubber that's made to deflect and push the rock or whatever branch or debris away from drilling right through the tire. There's a lot of things really going on in this tread. The old KO had what was called a shoulder lock technology. All the outside locks are in the exact same place. So you had a straight lug here, but really thin biting edges and lugs this way. The tread kind of squirmed a little bit. And so that was where this is greatly improved. Or if you had one of these tires and you had a little bit of abnormal wear on the outside edge, this that's going to go away with this tire with the bigger, more stable block on the outside. So let's talk about compounds. We raced the Baja 1000 on this tire. To, we had to win. That was the goal. Is we had to win to put. So Baja champion on the sidewall was a valid comment. So our job, we were tasked at making that win. We were able to compete the full Baja 1000, won our class with zero flat tires. When the engineers looked at the tire we got done, they looked at it and said we can do better. They went back to the drawing board and they came up with an even better compound that allows this tire to get double the mileage off-road of the KO. It's 100% better as far as mileage and durability is concerned in the rocks than the KO was. 
it is 15% longer life on the freeway. So if you have them on your truck and you got 40,000 miles before, you can expect to get 15% more miles than that as far as general life is concerned on the freeway. Also, this has the mud and snowflakes, so it's got your winter service, which is really beneficial on the rocks and the slick rock out here. You're getting a lot of compound advantages here that we haven't had in any other tire out there. And I think when you really look at the features this tire has and compare it to anything else on the market, you're going to see five to one features on this tire versus a competing all-terrain in its segment. It's a very, very aggressive all-terrain tire, and I think it really will suit like the JK owner or so many people that think that they need to be extreme, but really don't. They need a tire that will serve them better all around, or they want their mud terrain, but then they live in Utah, and we have our bad winters, and they need a tire that can perform in the ice and the snow that they don't get out of their mud terrain or their more aggressive type tires, where this tire is going to give you that mud, snow, wet surface traction that you really want and need, along with still overperforming you know, on the pavement, on the sandstone down here in Moab, or in the rocks or anywhere else you're going with the, with the compounds that it has. I've driven this tire in Baja. I've ran these on our Raptors at Miller Motorsports Park. We've run them in the rocks on our man-made rock crawling course. We've had them in, you know, in between hurricanes in Baja, running down with two foot high water running down the trail. So, you know, basically driving in the mud. And this tire has never once disappointed me. And I think all of you viewers out there and people that are really looking at tires and thinking about what should be the next tire on my vehicle, this is probably going to be that tire or should be that tire. Definitely one for you to consider.